Hey folks and welcome to this episode of the Mind, Body and Soul podcast with John Morris. Today we're joined by international speaker, best-selling author and marketing expert Nancy Matthews. Join us as we chat about her battles and struggles, not only in the world of business, but also in her personal life as well. We also chat about the changes she sees in business and also her book, The One Philosophy. That and so much more on today's episode of the Mind, Body and Soul podcast. Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with John Morris. Inspiring, motivating, and educating you in finding balance in the craziness of day-to-day life. Learn from and listen to a man who has a wealth of life experience, from business to bodybuilding, artist to author, and has learned to deal with his own physical and mental wellness. But that's not all. Each week, John interviews and picks the minds of special guests from all around the world and from all walks of life, from actors to authors, wrestlers to warriors, business owners to life coaches, and so much more. Welcome to today's episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with John Morris. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, welcome to another exciting episode of the Mind, Body and Soul podcast, where we help you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day life. I am internationally renowned artist John Morris. I am the author of the brand new book, The Battles We All Face, available, of course, at thebattlesweallface.com. And I am also your host. And I am so excited and pumped today and delighted to introduce our special guest. She is an author of the amazing book, The One Philosophy. She's a public speaker. She's done over a thousand workshops. She is known as the visionary with gut. She's appeared on CBS News, NBC, Fox, and ABC as well. She's the one and the only, the wonderful Nancy Matthews. Nancy, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I am delighted (laughs) to be here. Thank you so much, John, for having me. I'm excited. It's an absolute pleasure. What will it, what will uh, show up for us today? It's good. Absolutely. Who knows? And the, the joy of our show, because it's the Mind, Body and Soul podcast, we, we always say to folks, we're able to examine areas and talk about different subjects that other shows don't get to do. So we're really excited to have you on the show today and, and to pick your brains about so many different things as well. Nancy, for the fans and the, the audience at home that maybe haven't encountered you, you haven't crossed their path as of yet, tell us a little bit about yourself and what kind of work you do. So I am a mom and I've got two amazing children. I live in South Florida and I followed the pretty traditional path of, you know, went to school, went to college. I was going to be a lawyer and then I um, moved to Florida from New York and I decided, let me check out what being a lawyer is really all about. (laughs) And uh, then I ended up at the age of 24, got pregnant with my first son. So I never made it to law school then. And then I thought about it when I was about 40 and I never made it to law school then. (laughs) And all because I was really meant to be on this path of sharing Uh, what it is to be an entrepreneur and also what it is to go for what feels good to you, even if it's contrary to what mainstream says is the right thing Mm -hmm. to do. And that was a learning experience for me. And I have joy in sharing that with others. And and I love, uh, they could oftentimes, I'm called a vision architect, because if somebody has a dream or a vision or a goal, we can, you know, I can see the blueprint for how it could fully develop. And then it's also the piece of the person being able to fully develop to step into that next, that next role. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that is absolutely fantastic. And, uh, you know, man, that there's so much to unpack there, um, which is really, really exciting um, to to really get to, to grips with as well. Um, What I guess the first question that I want to ask you, we'll, we'll start, I suppose, right at the beginning what was early life like for you um, in terms of growing up, in terms of what were your interests as well? So I uh, grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I'm the youngest of four children. And P.S., I happen to be in business with two of my two sisters. Yep. So we're, you know, really lucky that we like each other. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've had this business called Women's Prosperity Network for 12 years And uh, so my mom was a single mom and she was a tough broad. So picture yourself, 1960s, right? 
Brooklyn, New York. You probably have seen like the movie Goodfellas mm -hmm. and The Godfather. And <laughs> that was kind of the flavor yeah. of the outskirts of my life. It wasn't my life, but plenty of my friends. My mom was friends with all of them. And so that was the vibe that I grew up in. And, uh, you know, my mom was kind of scrappy is what okay. it feels like. She, she always like did what needed to happen, especially as a single mom of four kids. And uh, I, being the youngest, I did get most of the advantage. We didn't have a whole lot of money. And I was the one of us who was able to actually go to college and I went away to college. And I, from the time I was in high school, wanted to be a lawyer. That was my path. Okay. What was it that inspired you about being a lawyer? I love words. I love language. I love being able to stand for what is right. You know, and we can have a whole conversation about yeah. right and wrong. That could be a whole nother <laughs> side. <laughs> um, I, I love the balance. I love the law. What I didn't like was some of the, you know, the corruption that takes place and What's, in, what's interesting is, you know, there's, there's a, a phrase or a saying. So if you're, if you're with your family and it's Sunday and you put on your Sunday best and you're getting ready to go to church, your mom is likely going to tell you, don't go play out by the lake. Yeah. Oh, I can play by the lake. I'm not going <laughs> to fall in. And, and with the law and so many of the choices that we get to make on an individual basis, we get right to that line and people can easily slip into the yeah. lake. So where I see that there's corruption and injustice, I don't think people intentionally set out to do mm -hmm. that. I think they just get too close to the lake. Yeah. And, and I completely agree with that. And it, it is, I mean, we've had, it, we've had certain guests on that have, have talked about it. I think of a uh, former professional wrestler, Al Snow, and he was talking about that everybody's got a decision to make. And when you own that decision, you know, it number one takes, the responsibility for your own actions but also it stops other people taking that responsibility and using it against you um mm -hmm. and and it's one of the things nobody sets out to be you know a, a drug addict or a, a you know criminal law or whatever it is oftentimes it's just it's the steps we take and that final step is what pushes you over the the, the edge what, what you were saying about law there exactly is true is that no matter how something can be good and pure and, and desire to help people in such a way when it falls into the wrong hands, obviously it could be disastrous. And uh, obviously you went in a completely different direction and uh, your career took a massive turn. Mm -hmm. What was the point for you where you decided, I want to get involved with business to, to help people, but in a different way? Uh, it, it really snuck up on me. <laughs> and here, here's, here's what happened there. And perhaps you can relate, especially as you've, you know, you've written your new book and you have this whole new you know, area of expansion. Things just seemed to happen, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. So um, I, I was stayed in the uh, legal field. I was in the legal field for about 20 years. And I owned, the, owned a title company, was doing real estate investing, and had all the measures of success that I was taught to look at, right, in the traditional sense. Yeah. But I wasn't really enjoying it. I had built my own business. Yay, I'm an entrepreneur. But I was also trapped by it. Yes. It was successful. It was making lots of money. But I became a slave to that just as I had to any other job, right? So I started to look at, you know, what could I do different? And um, a little bit hampered by the fact that I employed my entire family. <laughs> so my two sisters worked for me, my best friend worked for me, and my niece worked for me. And here it is. Okay, I don't want to do this anymore. You're all out of a job. <laughs> so that wasn't something I could uh, deal with at the time. Yeah. And uh, so I started doing seminars and speaking, teaching people about real estate and buying and selling real estate. And then I was at an event. I went to improve my speaking skills. I'm a lifelong learner. I will always seek ways to grow and expand in my skill sets and learn new things. So I'm at this event and this uh, gentleman who's hosting it stands on the stage and he looks around the room and he's like, there's about 80 people in this room and only 20 of you are women. 
don't you get, we need more women speakers. We, it's one of the best paid professions and we need women stepping to the front as leaders, women being women, not women trying to be men. Yeah. And I don't know what happened that day, but something stirred in my belly and I actually jumped out of my seat and said, that's me. <laughs> Never had done anything like that before. And at the time I thought it would be uh, leading with teaching real estate, being one of the foremost people teaching, you know, others how to buy and sell, all that good stuff, flip houses. And then a woman there approached me and said, I'm starting a woman's seminar company. Would you be a real estate expert? And I was like, sure, that sounds great. Well, that partnership didn't work out. But what came from this was that there was a need, a desire for bringing women together, not just in a coffee clutch, as we would call it here in, in the States, not just in a, a social club, and also women who were thirsty, just like I was for continuous growth and development. So we created Women's Prosperity Network based upon what we saw was in, you know, what was out there and what wasn't out there. So it's really designed to be, you know, mind, body, business, yep. soul, spirit, for bringing your personal impact, mm -hmm. positive impact to the world. And that's really where our focus is, supporting women who know that they have something to give and are willing to take the steps to get out there because it's not always easy. It, so that's it, how it, I, I ended up here. I, I think that's absolutely fantastic and a really, really great answer um, and a very, very in-depth answer. So thank you very, very much for that because, and, and it's true. And that's one of the things that I think obviously we have in common. We were talking about this a little bit before we came on air. The fact that, you know, I suppose in some ways there are people out there, like you say, that, that have got such a drive and such a passion, but they haven't maybe got it in their mind yet as to what it is they want to do or, or trying to find their own unique path. Um, and, you know, again, there's so many people that go through so many different journeys. Um, and it's important, I think, to let them know that they're not alone, that this isn't, you know, um, unique. You know, billions have been there before and billions yeah. will be there again in those exact same situations. I wanted to ask you as well, Nancy, just before we move on into the other areas of your business, what were the businesses that you started out with and the, the lessons that you learned from them? Mm, um, <laughs> so let me, let me answer that. Yeah. I want to tell back for a second too, because oftentimes this journey to finding your purpose and what you're really meant to do starts with many missteps or mm -hmm. wrong turns or trying things that didn't work out. And, you know, so I have been in a variety of different network marketing companies, you know, tr I've tried those out. So I, I did lots of that. Um, I, like I said, I had the title company, I had a mortgage company, real estate investment company. I was doing all of those things. And the, the, the key for me, as well as for everybody, is to be able to look back upon all of the different jobs mm -hmm. and experiences you had, focus on the things that you most enjoyed doing and that came the easiest to yeah. you. Yeah. So if I go back to the legal profession, I loved to write. So I would write the motions and the letters to opposing counsel and the, you know, basically the arguments to the petitions to the judge to agree with our side. Well, fast forward, it's really no different than writing marketing materials yeah. to yeah. inspire people to want to take action <laughs> to work with you. So it's, it translates. Um, the, other, the other thing that shows up when you focus on it through your business, through your life is what are your values? And I believe that a great starting place for anyone who either is beginning in a new business or is trying to find their passion, begin with what your values are because you want those values to transcend into your business with you as well. And there are going to be opportunities for you to make decisions that are either in alignment or out of alignment with your values. And when you know them and you can stand by them, it makes everything easier and what already exists to support you in fulfilling your vision becomes visible visible because it's no longer clouded by indecision or confusion worry and doubt 
I think that's fantastic and, and really, really uh, key, I think, to remind folks as well that are just either starting out on a business or just interested in the conversation. You know, for both you and I, you know, um, there was no overnight success. We learned a great deal of lessons and many lessons, obviously, that we're able to apply now in our, you know, our own unique businesses. But there was no overnight success. It wasn't just a case of, oh, well, I'm now in real estate or I'm now in, you know, all the other uh, businesses and, and professions that we've done. It was a case of each one comes with a life lesson and it's developing me so that I can share the experience with other people as well. Yes. And, you, and you must be willing to be not good at it before you get really good at it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you and I were chatting earlier and you, um, I have a guitar right next to my desk because <laughs> I'm just learning to play guitar. And people are like, oh, play a song. I'm like, I'm not good yet. I need to practice <laughs> some more. And I'm still going to try it and, mm -hmm. and play it with people because that I think that's part of what will actually endear you to others yeah. is that vulnerability of saying, I may not be really good at this, but I'm giving it a go. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, and I think, again, like you said, that's important. I remember in 2017 when Facebook changed their algorithm and we're sitting there and I, I'd just gone self-employed uh, with uh, Art from the Heart. Uh, maybe I was about a year into it. We'd seen great success. But Facebook changed their algorithm on how we could actually promote and what we could do. And I'm sitting there with my wife thinking, what on earth do we do now? So logically, you go and build an art school and, and you teach people how to paint. And it was literally the fear that was within me, even though that I've been doing this for so long, was just terrifying. But they were like, Dude, you could put a dot on a page, you know, and, and show us how to do that. And we would still believe that that's, you know, um, you know, amazing art. So from, from that day forward, I was like, I would have to really screw up big time in order to disappoint these folks. As long as I'm showing them something new and I'm taking them on the journey with me, they're so appreciative. And when you're honest with people, it's incredible, you know, what will actually happen. That's a really valuable lesson to learn. Yeah. And... Uh, isn't it interesting how this little, let me call him a demon even, yeah. of I'm not good enough, shows up at all these different stages. Yeah. And uh, I'm also uh, a neuro-linguistic programming practitioner. Okay. Yeah. I support people in getting into the subconscious mind to mm -hmm. remove limiting beliefs. And, you know, we peel some away and like, oh, look, what's under there? There's yeah. an, And the common thread for everyone is we don't, I don't think I'm good enough. Yeah. It, yeah. And it shows up. It's fascinating. It's, it really is. And I mean, that, that's whole, my, that, that may be something we need to do a part two because, you know, that there's so much in there, um, you know, and, and, you know, one of our guests has been talking about like the lies that we tell ourselves. We always say, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay at this. I'm fine at this, or I'm not quite good at that. And it's, it's fine to tell yourself these things, but it comes back to what you believe internally. Because we can all we can all tell ourselves things, you know. We'll say, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm okay, or I'm not good with this." But when you believe it with all of your being and your core, now this takes time. Um, but when you believe it with all of your core and your belief uh, and, and all your being, that's the difference between belief and the difference between desire and belief. You believe with everything that you've got in you. Yeah. Talking about uh, different beliefs and and different, um, I suppose, people that are around. I, I've got to ask about this because Jim Rowan obviously was one of your early mentors. You had so many mentors when I was doing my research for this. It was incredible. Um, talk to us about some of those and some of the life lessons that you learned from, from folks like Jim and, and, and all the others, I suppose. We could be so here many. a while. <laughs> yeah, so, so many. So, um, so Zig Ziglar, who mm -hmm. I would imagine you've heard of. Yes, absolutely. One of his quotes is that you can have everything you want in life if you just help up enough other people get what they want mm -hmm. which also lines up with my friend bob berg's yeah. the law of compensation you know the more you serve people the more you receive and it's the energy of giving and receiving so that has been a huge huge lesson for me in just keeping my focus on how can i serve what do people need and how can i make a difference and there's this, this line where we have to trust that if we give, we will receive. Mm -hmm. And I also believe you need to be prepared to receive. So one of the things I focus on with entrepreneurs, especially service-based professionals, you know, coaches, healers, and things like that, 
oh, I'll just give all this away and not charge. I'm like, well, you're going to go broke yeah. and you're, you're violating the universal laws of exchange in abundance. So you, we cre always, it's always about exchange. And if you're just giving, giving, giving and not receiving, you're breaking the universal law, right? It's like, we yeah. breathe out, we breathe in, we, it's, it goes both ways. So, uh, so that, that was a, a really big lesson and I'm really all focused. My biggest lessons from all my mentors come down to how we relate to and treat other people, which is what my book is about. The one philosophy it's about treating each and every person you meet the same way you do as if you thought they were the one. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach to the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Unlike a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step-by-step -step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire or they get that goal or they hit that big target or whatever it might be. And also, as the trifecta, I'm committed to you, to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be at, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step plan of action that we can put together. But now folks, I want to tell you about the early bird special offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right. If you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that. And we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards. So if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to really develop that passion, to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one, understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch, let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other and I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks take care god bless and i will see you soon if you think about it if someone's the one like i'm a huge bruce springsteen fan mm -hmm. we're going to talk about him absolutely <laughs> oh, okay good you did your homework i love it <laughs> i have to because at least i want people to think that i know what i'm talking about if nothing else yeah that's really good so 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 go for the one philosophy mm -hmm. if you were the one that I knew could introduce me to Bruce Springsteen yes. so that we can take my song to the masses and change the world together. Mm -hmm. I might treat you differently than the, the way that I treat the person at the supermarket yeah. and the checkout line. And the one philosophy is about what happens yeah. when we just start treating everyone in that same way. And it's, it's amazing what has unfolded over the years. I completely agree. And again, I, I sat down and I had a look on your website because I always like to do my preparation work maybe a week or so before. And then if there's any videos or anything, I like to look at them on the day so it's fresh in my mind. 
And I sat there and, and I watched um, a couple of the different videos and listening to you talk about the one philosophy, again, it, again, not only lit a light bulb in my head, but it was like, this lady gets it. Because I always look for the people who, in my opinion, get it, you know, that actually really understand. And, and there's a difference between a lot of folks that just oh, have head knowledge, but again, going back to that belief and that core belief with everything that you have. And I looked at it, I said, I, I, I mean, I was so excited to interview you anyway, um, but I, I saw this today and I was practically jumping up and down because I was just like, this lady gets it. Um, I, I, but it's funny because our conversation today came out of a conversation that I had with a lady who's going to be interviewing me in a couple of weeks, Pat Iver, Patricia Iver. Um, and she said to me at the end, is, you know, are you looking for guests? Is there anyone that you have in mind? So I gave her a kind of a framework and she's like, I've got somebody, Nancy Matthews, and she's quite a big deal. So she's <laughs> obviously, and we start talking and bing, bada, boom. Um, but I'm finding that, um, again, that the whole thing of, you know, when you're honest with people, it's amazing what comes back. And when you genuinely say to folks, I really want to help, you know, and, and you're showing that and you, you know, you, you're um, uh, demonstrating that and displaying that in all of your behaviors, it's incredible to see how people respond to that and they get behind that. And this is how movements start. This is how positive movements start. Um, and, you know, it, it's such a phenomenal thing. And, and when you talk about the one philosophy, the, the one movement, whatever you want to call it, you know, it is so true because out of little conversations and just taking that step of saying, hey, I've got this, in my case, Mind, Body and Soul podcast, would you be interested in being a guest? Um, I don't know whether I should actually go ahead and say this. I'll tell you off air, but I'm going to do it anyway. Have you heard of Sandy Krakowski? Baseball? No, no. This, this is the lady that started selling her um, products literally in her kitchen. And she made her first million as a single mom doing this. She is a major, major person. I met Sandy when I very first started out in business uh, many years ago, <laughs> many years ago. But I messaged her today and she's got a following on Instagram of over a million followers alone. Mm. So, and it's that one thing that again, you open up and you say, yes. And this is something I'm finding more and more as we, we talk. And I know I'm getting off track here, but I'm, I'm so excited. But it's, it's one of the things that I find when you open up to life and you say yes to life and you're willing to say, okay, well, I don't know this person, but I want to interview them and see what they're all about. And all of a sudden it's like, wow. This person, like you see, is the can be the next step, and you can be the next step for somebody else. And we're all helping each other along our journey because nobody gets rich alone. Correct, correct. And that courage that it took for you to um, reach out and give mm -hmm. it a go yeah. is what I refer to as taking inspired action. Like there was something that stirred in you that said, oh, "I should reach out to Sandy." Yeah. And instead of sitting on it, you took action. That's it. And, and I think we, so go. Yeah, I was just going to say, sometimes we get these little voices, little taps on the shoulder, these things that show up and you go, oh, that'll never work. She'll never say mm -hmm. yes. Blah, 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 blah. But what have you got to lose? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think it's fantastic because, you know, again, just, just before we move on, I'm, I'm so fired up and pumped up about all we're talking about today. It's just wonderful. But when, you know, again, you take those small steps, you can just change your entire life and so many amazing things can happen as a result of taking one small step. You know, I, I messaged one guy on an off chance um, and he's actually, in my opinion, one of the, the greatest minds of our generation. Um, and I messaged him on, a, on an off chance that he may actually do an interview. Well, he, he said, yes, absolutely. And my first thing is, what am I going to say to the guy when I encounter the guy? And the first thing actually was he was huffing and puffing and grunting in the in the microphone because he's trying to set his camera up and like, oh, it's one of those days, is it? And he just burst into laughing and it felt like I'd known him forever. Um, and, and it's wonderful when you can do that. It really is. Nancy, I want to ask you if, if you can to go a little bit deeper into the one philosophy, more the mindset from a psychological point of view of what it really means to embrace the one philosophy. So, wow, I could go on for a long time. <laughs> um, so l let, me, let me do it in this fashion because okay. there could be a whole lot. What happened for me is, and how this all came about, was I was getting ready to have a meeting with someone that just happened to call in on one of the teleclasses that I was doing. And she was asking a question about writing a book. 
So I gave her some advice. The guest I had on gave her some advice. And then I followed up with her. I said, hey, reach out to me and we can continue the conversation. So from the space of just be giving and being kind and generous and wanting to support this person, I come to find out she's a local TV news anchor. Wow. And we set up a time to meet and I was getting lying in bed that morning, getting ready, you know, preparing mm -hmm. to go meet with her. And I was like, oh my gosh, maybe she's the one that's going to help me get a TV show happening. And I can be on TV and I can make this happen. She's the one I better make sure that I learn about her first. I better read about her, pay attention. What am I going to look like that? You know, all of these things that we would do. And in the midst of it, I just, it was one of those light bulb moments where I recognized Look how coincidentally happenstance that I met her. Now I'm going to be with her and I'm treating her in a different way because I think she's the one. And I just started an experiment. And I thought, what would happen if I started to treat everyone I meet in that, with that same energy of excitement and enthusiasm? Yeah. And magic just starts happening, not only for me, but for everyone around me. So what I found is that when you meet someone, whether it's at a store, a restaurant, a gas station, a conference, on a Zoom session, whatever, wherever it is, that if you take time to be fully present, really listen, and just see what the magic in that moment is about to reveal to you, the reason that you were brought together in that time and space reveals. And it may simply be like, for example, with Pat Iyer, when we were talking earlier that day, um, we had a great conversation, which then created her reaching out to you and, or in your conversation and me coming to like, it makes everything so much easier. So that's really the foundation of it is to honor everyone and to be able to look beyond differences, mm -hmm. judgments, prejudging, you know, whether it's skin, color, attitude, whatever it is, because, and this goes back to Harry Truman, I believe it was President Harry Truman started something called People to People here in the United States, where students in middle school and high school would travel to other countries. And so this is right after World War II, because he believed if people could really get to know each other, we could stop war. Yeah. Yeah. It and it's, it, it's the same essence. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, frequently folks that have, have seen the show over and over will recognize this. It's a Rubik's Cube and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's no different than anything else. But there is a teaching that I do and literally <laughs> seems to go all over the place now. And it's called the Rubik's Cube teaching. And it's all about perspective. And it's the whole thing of imagine that you can only see this. Now you, I'm looking at it, your top three squares would be convinced that it's white. And you could say it's white, it's white, it's white, it's absolutely white. There is no other color that is, but I could say, well, it's red, orange, blue, which from my perspective, it is obviously the factor from here. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when we have that conversation with somebody else on how they can see life, how they view life, how they understand and perceive things. You, you get a more complete picture of the world. And I think when you do that, it's just incredible but because people are so closed off by always wanting to say it's white, 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 or green, 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 whatever it is, you know, to be it, fine, just, yeah. it, it eliminates so many conversations, which, you know, hopefully well, this show is helping to, to break down. I, I, I believe it is. And thank you for that. And <laughs> here's another thing that, that can help us all to see things from another perspective, which is more loving, kind, and, under, and compassionate. If you really, like say somebody does something mm -hmm. that annoys you or hurts somebody else and you, 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 you want to jump to, I can't believe they did that or what's wrong with that person. But consider this, I believe that every action is actually motivated by someone trying to get happier. Mm -hmm. Why do people do drugs? Why do they steal? Why do they hurt each other? They think it's gonna bring them happiness. Even the most self-destructive or outer destructive activities, the person performing them thinks doing this is gonna get me to be happier. That's all we're all seeking. Yeah. And not easy to swallow if you're thinking about somebody who's a, a mass murderer or the, you know, so many of the, the, the things that happen that are just unconscionable. Yeah. 
but that lone killer yeah what was they going through mm -hmm. uh there's a ted talk by the i'm sure you've heard here in the states um I think it was 20 years ago, Columbine, which was one of the yes. first school shootings. Mm -hmm. And there's a TED talk by his mother. Right. I'm a mother, right? The, the, that yeah. child was in such a state of pain and despair. That's what happened. And then the mother is feeling that too. And if, if we've got to, we've got to see ourselves as each other, mm -hmm. just at various stages of different pain and as Eckhart Tolle would call it, our pain body is the one that's actually speaking and doing those actions. I completely agree. And um, it's really interesting when, when we're doing other shows uh, with other folks, there was a gentleman on, I believe our first show in fact that we ever did was Gabe Nathan who works for suicide prevention in the United States. And uh, you know that was something he was talking about. If we could sit down and have that conversation you know, and again, you know, and again, a lot of people are uncomfortable by the boxes that people are put into mass murderer, sex offender, trafficker, whatever. But it, it, as, as stupid as this may sound to the audience listening, if you could sit down and have a conversation with that person mm -hmm. as to what's led them to this, you'd probably quickly find, well, you know, my father did this, my mother did this, you yeah. know, I, I was abused as a teenager. I was, and all these things go on and on and on and on. Um, there's a lot more depth than what we just see, but unfortunately people that are, I think unfortunately a lot of people that fill up our world are so just closed off to so many things and to just opening up and thinking about things that well, if you can't have that conversation, it, 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 you know, there's no point because you've already made your, your decision. Sorry, Nancy. At, well, at, and so <clears throat> the person who's closed off also thinks staying closed off will make them happier and keep right. them safe. Yeah. It's all, it's all the yeah. same kind yeah. of thing that's controlling us. And for me, the more that I can align with the spirit of source, energy, universe, and mm -hmm. divine, the more that I can give myself the opportunity to clean and clear of whatever limiting beliefs yeah. are going on in my subconscious mind, that's where the space gets created for more for me to be more loving and and i, I don't know are you familiar with um the prayer and practice of ho'oponopono i don't think so Ooh, head, no. you are gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's so the whole process of ho'oponopono and if any of our viewers know it comment or do something however we communicate on this platform but um <laughs> The whole process of it is about taking 100% responsibility for everything, okay. everything. And that's one of the main um, principles in the one philosophy as well. So with the Ho'oponopono, it's a, a four sentence prayer that is, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And thank you. Wow. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And you're not speaking to the other person that you may have wrong or you may think wronged you. You're speaking to that which is in yourself that is the cause or creation of the experience you're having. And you're just speaking to the divine. You're speaking to God. So what I do on a personal basis is notice where I'm feeling emotionally. Mm -hmm. So on the emotional scale from, you know, angry, mad, depressed, guilty, de shameful, you know, complacent. Oh, I got a little hope. Oh, there's a little bit of optimism. Oh, now I'm feeling happy. Now I'm feeling love. Now I'm connecting this. So there's the yeah. vibrational scale that you're familiar with, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So anytime I notice that my emotions, my vibration is below that line, that's when I invoke Ho'oponopono. Wow. So I just noticed there's something in me that's feeling something that's mm -hmm. not love in many, its many manifestations. And if I'm not in a spirit of love, all that means is I'm disconnected from the source of love. Yeah. And I have with awareness, I can make a choice, mm -hmm. say my little prayer. Oh, hi God or divine source, whatever you call it. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot. You are always here for me to tap into. Please forgive me and remove whatever it was in me that was causing me to feel anything but love. Thank you. That's a fantastic awareness to, to have. It really, really is. Um, one of the questions that we ask, um, it, it, it's taken a whole deep turn this and it's, it's lovely and it's wonderful. I love being able to do this because believe it or not folks, I'm actually finding a lot of healing through doing these shows as well. And I'm learning so much from our guests. So I absolutely love this. But Nancy, I want to ask you, you know, everybody goes through, you know, peak, what, what I call peaks and valleys in life. And obviously, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of the peaks and the, the enjoyable moments. What were some of the valleys for you? Some of the things that you had to overcome and the challenges that you faced? Mm, there have been so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the first you know, one of the first major ones for me was when I was 24 and I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. I was single. I had, you know, I wasn't with the, the father of the baby. I was a, a legal secretary and I was like, what am I going to do? And um, I was close to not having the baby wow. and uh, decided to, like, I was on the phone making the appointment to terminate the pregnancy when, and just in that moment for me, I was like, I can do this. I can give this kid a good life. And I had been, you know, partying quite a bit. I was doing some drugs. So this was a, a major yeah. turning point for me. Um, when I started that business, so what helped me in that moment was I got selfless okay. and started caring for another. And that brought me to a new level wow. of evolution spiritual mm -hmm. evolution you know i didn't call it that probably then but i now know that's what it was right um when i um sold my business and decided i was going to go with this seminar company with this other person for six months we were planning and building and doing all this and i was spending money like water and six months in we host this event and there's supposed to be 500 people there and 50 show up 25 of whom we actually paid to come. Oh. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> oh my goodness. What was so, going through your mind at that point? <laughs> oh my gosh. So, what was going through my mind? I can't, well, honestly, I can't believe how stupid I am. Why did I do this? I never should have let my, sold my business. What am I going to do now? Oh my God. And then I was flying home from LA to Florida on the red eye after this massive failure, spent all the liquid cash that I had at the time. And I was like, what am I gonna do now? And what happened was on that plane, I heard the voice of a woman in my head who I told about the vision of this new women's seminar company and how we were gonna bring women together. And she was like, I'm, I'm in, I need that. And so that one seed of hope is what we built our company on. Wow. Like going back to grassroots. But I felt all the dejection, the misery. Yeah. I felt all of that, all of it. You, you're not alone in that because, I mean, it, it's like when you build a product or when you do anything. Uh, and this is, again, you know, to anybody that's trying anything in life, you know, there are going to be times when it succeeds where you didn't expect it to. And equally, there's going to be times when it falls flat on its face when you thought, oh, this is a sure fire win. Um, you know, life is full of surprises like that. And we kind of can't predict it. There's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes it's just sometimes the tides and, and the way things go, but it's a lesson for us, uh, hopefully moving forward as well. You talk about the, um, the, the Women's Prosperity Network and I had to write that down to make sure that I got that correct. Thank um, you. It, it is amazing. And this is something that I was uh, writing about in my own book, The Bathrooms We All Face, available at bathroomswealthface.com. A uh, nice little plug there, but it was, you know, the whole thing of everything that we see in our external world, and I've got a window out here, folks, that's why I'm pointing out there, um, actually came from an internal concept, whether it's your car, whether it's a fence, whether it's your house, whether it's, you know, windows, whatever it may be, it came from an internal concept. Never, ever diminish or discourage yourself on the power of a thought, because mm -hmm. as, as Nancy's going to share with you, the, the woman's uh, Prosperity Network obviously went on to do some amazing things. Talk to us a little bit about that, Nancy. Oh, but I want to talk about the juicy concept of thoughts becoming things. Sure, for <laughs> many do. We're going through, we segue everywhere. I'm like, oh, he's going there. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so I don't know. I got so excited. I'm like, here we go. All right, for, for all of our listeners, and then I'll tell you about Women's Prosperity Network, be sure you get a wonderful book called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that one, John? I think I've heard of that one before, oh. yes. I don't know, actually if I've got that on my bookshelf. I've got a lot over there, so I'll yeah. take a look. So, and um, I've actually set it up. You can get a free copy of the book. Go to Science of Getting Rich, free pdf.com. Just free, no opt-in, no nothing. Just, um, um, it's my mission to share this book that was written in 1910 right. with the world. Mm -hmm. And what do you do audio recordings of that? I do. Uh, that's my. Uh, it's the, I, I think I may have heard that before. I think yeah. that was actually one of the first. Sorry, okay. I got segue yeah. there. So. No, that's all good. <laughs> uh, so, so talk about inspired action. Mm -hmm. So back in 2012, I read this book for a second time, and that's when I got it. Because the first time I read it, I didn't really get it, which was back in 2002. And I was so much good had happened to me from really reading this book and integrating the principles. And it's all about, you know, setting your wishes, those thoughts out into what he refers to as the formless substance or infinite intelligence to, you know, our thoughts become mm -hmm. things, right? Yeah. I had, I, I had a property I owned and I put an ad on Craigslist. The first guy that showed up within seven days, I had a check for 30,000. Wow. So many That's things. Awesome. We had land donating for a project we're working on. And so anyway, I became so uh, enamored with the process and the way that I was shifting that I created this course out of it, a quick inspired idea that thousands and thousands of people have been able to tap into this and have miraculous results in their life. Wow. Um, so Women's Prosperity Network is a blend of strategic and practical business advice coupled with do what you love and the money will follow. Mm -hmm. Do what you love, get good at it, and then the money follows. And, and it's about you know, just like you had that inspiration to reach out to Sandy and you got the yes and the other gentleman that you asked to be on the show, it's about learning to trust yourself enough yeah. to hear the messages for the path that's really already been laid out for you. I think that's absolutely. And if I could just add to that, one of the things that my old business coach used to say to me that, that she always loved, and it's just the way my brain works, is she would tell me what I needed to do and I would go and do it. And Tony Robbins, world famous life coach guru, everybody I think in the, the speaking business world knows about Tony Robbins. Um, you know, he talks about that, that when you take action, you can learn and read as many things as you want, but unless you take action with it, it's not going to make a difference. You know, you have to take action and follow through. And, and like Nancy was saying, you know, one idea, one concept can literally change the world. And with that in mind, of course, we're going to talk about Bruce Springsteen. Okay. <laughs> you want to take this one, Nancy? You can, you can, you can do this now. <laughs> um, well, so here's what's interesting, because I'll tell you a, a little bit of my own lesson and learning mm -hmm. in that as well. Um, one of the workshops that we host, Women's Prosperity Network, is called Level Up. And we do it every year between December and January so that people are working on their plan for the mm -hmm. next year. They can cast their vision and what they want. And one of the activities we do, we call a virtual cocktail party. Okay. And we pretend it's three years from now. And I'm just seeing you again after not seeing you for three years. And you share about all the wonderful and amazing things that have happened since we saw each other three years ago. So I stand in front of the room and I'm giving a demonstration of it so people can kind of get into the energy and the vibration and have some fun with it. So I'm, this is um, probably four years ago now. I think it was four years ago. Um, I'm standing in front of the room and I say, um, I, what happened for me is um, I, my, my book, The One Philosophy, the curriculum is now being taught in the school system so that children are raised knowing to wow. treat everybody as the one. Women's Prosperity Network is, made, is worldwide. We have thousands and thousands of members. Oh, and last night I was on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> brought me on to interview me about my book, The One Philosophy. And it was the same night Bruce Springsteen happened to be there and we sang a song together mm -hmm. about the one. 
So I'm like just in the zone of sharing mm -hmm. what my vision is and what I, you know, all of this cool stuff I would love for it to happen. And that comes out of my mouth. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that would be cool. So I'm a huge, huge Bruce Springsteen fan. Mm -hmm. I've seen him in, in the band in concert probably 80 times uh, so far. <laughs> I think hopefully we'll go to concerts again. Yeah, I remember when we could go to concerts. Back in the day. <laughs> Back in the day. Um, so so when that happened and I got excited by the, the thought of it and the idea of it, I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to one day sing a song with Bruce Springsteen, I better learn how to sing. So I started taking singing lessons. If I'm going to um, sing with Bruce Springsteen one day, I better have a song. So I hired a songwriter mm -hmm. and we wrote a song and it's called Everyone's the One. And we sang it together in a duet format because one day me and you, Bruce, we're gonna be singing this together. <laughs> It's amazing because, you know, when you talk about that, and, and again, funny thing, and again, we, we haven't even talked about this, that I am a singer-songwriter, or I used to be. Um, and it was one yeah, of the you things... you still are. Well, I, I, <laughs> not by profession anymore. That's correct, what I mean. Correct, correct. Um, but I remember, you know, that, that whole thing of, of having that vision and hearing a song or something in my mind, and then words just start flowing to it. And it's incredible just how that um, really transpires and, and, and just builds out. Like you were saying there, you know, that there are times when I do these interviews and right at the end, one guest uh, right at the beginning, four or five weeks ago, had said to me, who's on your list of people that you want to interview? And I rattled off maybe five to 10 names straight ahead. And the guy's jaw literally dropped. <laughs> he was just like, are you for real? And I'm like, yeah. And it's like, you know what the crazy thing is as well? I'm now figuring out who knows such and such to go to that next but so exactly what we were talking about there. Um, and it's incredible when you start to actually envision things and you know the destination, it's then just about figuring out how the heck to get there. Um, and I'm really excited about that, about, you know, for, for you as well, about Bruce Springsteen, try again, tripping on my own teeth, Bruce Springsteen. Um, and, you know, the, the amazing body of work, obviously, that he went on to do and the inspiration that he's given to millions probably billions around the world it's it's incredible it still does he's absolutely dropping, he's dropping a new record on friday it's incredible i mean it really is nancy final question i wanted to ask you um and again this wasn't on my list it's just, it's just what's in my mind what are some of the rituals that you practice on a daily basis to do what you do mm. um so the first 15 minutes to about an hour. I, I, I started off with a 15 minute practice of reading, journaling, um, and really connecting to source. Meditation was not easy for me. Mm -hmm. So I started with two minutes of meditation, then three minutes, and then five minutes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. As long as you're making progress. Ex exactly. As long as you're pausing to tap in. So every day, I read, journal, and uh, set intentions for the day. Who do I want to be? Mm -hmm. I have a personal um, mission statement that I seek to live by every day. And uh, it is every day I appreciate, educate, and elevate. Appreciate all that I have. Appreciate the people in my life. Educate myself and share it with others. And elevate others, lifting them up in spirit, mind, and thought as well as elevating myself to always go higher in my responses. That's absolutely fantastic. That really is. And folks, you know, when we're talking about rituals, it, it's, a, it's, it's basically a daily practice of something that you do that's going to set you up for the day. It's as simple as that, whether you call it prayer, whether you call it incantations or, or whatever it might be for you. It's, it's whatever is setting you up for the day for your own personal belief. Nancy, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you want to touch on? Well, I, we covered so many. <laughs> we do this in an hour. Today. So thank you so much uh, for having me and for the work that you're doing uh, and just being that example of what's possible and, and opening the space for others to do the yeah. same. Like the energy around this is just so expansive for people to, you know, activate and live in their highest potential. And what that is, is what fulfills you and what makes you happy. 
Like focus on the things that make you happy because that's the path to your purpose. I completely agree. And folks, I know I've, I haven't shared this um, openly, but again, if you're sitting there saying, you know, well, I've got this illness, or I've got this illness. I've got dyspraxia. I've got BPD, PTSD, and colitis. I should not really be doing this according to doctors, but when you've got a vision and a mindset that says, you know what? We can do this. We can find ways around this. We can inspire people. You know, I've, got, I've been blessed with the greatest gift that I could ever be blessed with, my mouth. And I can sit there and I can talk literally forever because I've had some of the best teachers, past and present and probably in the future as well. So, you know, there are always ways if you are committed. And in the, the show with Al Snow, I know we've mentioned him three or four times, but, but I, I can't harp on enough that, you know, in the show with him, you know, we talk about mindset so much and your mindset will literally make or break you. And it literally is the difference between being successful with you and, and attaining your goals. That's what we mean by successful or just dreaming about them. And we want you to be able to, to find that strength and that passion. And that's something that Nancy does. And she does an amazing job of it. Nancy, where can folks find you if they want to get in touch with you? Um, I'm very Googleable, as I like to say. <laughs> so if you just Google Nancy Matthews, it'll come up, nancymatthews.com and Women's Prosperity Network. Oh, mostly on Facebook, a little bit on LinkedIn, but that's my primary place for yes. uh, social media. That is fantastic. That really is. And folks, if you do want to know more about Nancy, you've got to go check her out. Go check out the book, The One uh, the One Philosophy. You will really, really uh, just benefit so much from it. And, and hopefully, because it really breaks down a lot of what we've been talking about today, but in a lot more detail, a lot more depth. And it's just written in such a wonderful, relaxed way as well. And I thoroughly love it as well. So folks, we are at time. And I want to thank our special, wonderful guest, Nancy Matthews, for being on the show with us. I have been your host, John Morris. This has been the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast where we help you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life. Don't forget to come and check us out at thebattlesweallface.com where you can check out my brand new book, and there'll be an advert in a minute, about uh, coping with trauma, coping with loss, coping, just finding joy in the moments, and also so many other things. If you're dealing with anxiety, depression, you know, it, it walks you through so much. And if nothing else, if you don't get anything else out of this book, you're going to know that somebody else has been there before you, somebody else will be there after you, and that you're not alone. And that's a great comfort, I think, to have for anybody who's facing these things. Until next time, take care. We'll see you at thebattleswealthface.com. When we come into this world, we come in with a sense of awe and wonder, believing that things will work out for the best, filled with excitement. We play like children and we enjoy our lives. But as we get older, we find out that everything maybe isn't as rosy as we first thought it would be. Live life long enough and you realize that what once seemed like happy families can very quick turn into Dungeons and Dragons. Have you ever experienced anxiety, worry, or maybe even fear on an insane level? I want to let you know right here, right now, that you're not alone. Everything from homelessness, betrayal by my best friend, abandonment from the people that I thought would have my back. In fact, I've experienced so many different situations. To tell you all would take a very, very long time indeed. But the good news is I'm here to tell you that, well, they've left their mark on me. I've come through all of them. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And I've got a brand new book. It's called The Battles That We All Face. This book is designed to give you encouragement. It's designed to give you hope. It's designed to teach you, to challenge you, to get you to think a little bit more. The full title is The Battles We All Face, a devotional with a difference. Because I don't want you to just read it from start to finish. I want you to take time over this. I want you to read the first chapter and really process it. This book is designed, if nothing more, as I said, to challenge you, to encourage you, to give you hope, but ultimately to let you know that whatever you're facing, you, my friend, are not alone. I want to encourage you right now to not let fear or the past stop you from living an amazing, amazing life. Each page in this book has one of my art pieces in and has been specifically placed there to give you, the reader, an association to the subject discussed. Please don't delay. You owe it to yourself 
to start rebuilding your life. Life is not over until you draw your last. Don't delay, order today. Life is short. You owe it to yourself, as long as you're drawing breath, to stand up and fight for the things that you want in life. And my friend, you've got an ally in me who understands completely what you're going through. Have an awesome day. Click that link below, and I'll see you on the other side.